Hello, everybody, and welcome back to all of our viewers. Welcome back, panelists, Momo, Madeline, and Arrington. Uh, it's great to have you back for episode two, where we're going to take some of the situations that you all mentioned in episode one that were really challenging and hard to have certainty or faith or believe that this is coming for my best interest. How could that be when I got rejected from my 45th job? How could that be when my friend doesn't want to, you know, repair our relationship? How could that be when my teacher legitimately forgets to order my test after a year of work? So there's, there's situations like this. And then, then there's all of those of you that did this exercise at home and have your hundreds um, of different opportunities, different challenges, different situations that that triggered you and made you feel certain things. And so one thing I want to start with, which I think is super important because we ended with this in our last episode, is that we feel that these situations, these situations are happening to us. Right. Momo said he wanted to go to blame. Madeline felt, how could this be another employer that doesn't, you know, Arrington felt like this friend doesn't know. It's like, this, I want to go and sit down and, you know, repair this relationship. But, and, and that's, I think, where we need to start because if we feel the situations are happening to us, there's no way we're ever going to feel. And that's really what certainty is about feeling that this situation is coming from the creator, knowing deep in my heart that this situation is coming from the creator. And then that brings a whole bunch of, light, fulfillment, excitement, positivity to it, um, which is really what certainty is about. It's about bringing light into darkness. So I wanted to start by just detaching the situation from what actually happened. So let's just talk about this for a second. Madeline, you shared that the job, you know, after many applications still denied from the job after four years of college right you work so hard and then you dream of the the moment where you graduate you have your diploma in hand and then you go and knock on a few doors but you know 2020 hit and I was sent home no jobs no knocking no doors <laughs> and, and for someone that might be in, in high school it might be the same when you you know you go to college you prepare you study you put your best effort you apply to your favorite school no dice no, no dice. dice. And I have to say, I had a better example. And I just realized that I didn't want to share because it was so triggering in the moment. But basically, it's very similar to when I was in high school, I worked really, really hard at the debate club and to make into the, the debate team. And they picked everyone in my class who was, I thought, as good as I was. And they didn't pick me. And I, I couldn't go back into the classroom. Like I literally locked myself in a bathroom and was like, what is wrong with me? I worked so hard. And that's exactly how I felt when I kept getting these rejections. What is so wrong with me that other people can't recognize that I'm good for something? You know, I, I felt so hopeless because it's out of your hands, right? You can't pick yourself for a team. You can't pick yourself for a job. You can't pick yourself for a college that you want to attend. And so, and so the thought is, this is happening to me, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. These people just don't see me. So, so yeah. let's, let, let's flip the script a bit. I was going to actually yeah. ask someone to bring a, I was going to ask somebody else to bring up another example. And it's funny that you led with that. So would you say mm -hmm. that those two situations made you feel a similar way? Definitely. Well, the feeling that the joint feeling was, hopelessness and um, defeated wow. maybe because it's like something that you believe and the effort that you put into it combined when you don't achieve it it's an attack on your identity it's an attack on who you think you are and what you think you're capable of so that's that let, let's go into that has there been any other situations aside from those two in your life where you your capability, your light, your soul has been challenged where someone else doesn't see your worth or somebody else rejects you before actually allowing your light to fully shine in that situation. For sure. For sure. Especially, Aside from those two. Yeah. Especially when I was, uh, when I was applying for colleges too, I think I applied to like 10 and I got into one and it wasn't my first pick. So I was like, okay, 
is this so, from the creator? It, I was I was uh, hesitant to believe it so, was from the creator. So we'll pause there for a second, but I just want to I want I want to like if you the 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 idea of the opponent, and we we spoke about that in one of our previous um, in one of our previous podcasts, previous discussions, is that he gets us to focus very much on the moment, and we forget that there has been things that have happened in the past that are very similar and trigger similar feelings. So it's not about the college. It's not about the job. It's not about the person that didn't see the light that's inside of me. It's about every time these situations happen, I feel the same way. And then we can take it away from the person. It's not the person. It's this feeling that I need to combat. It's not the person. And then every opportunity. Anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll save some <laughs> secrets for later. But but let's go with uh, Arrington. Arrington, do you... Do, so you said your your situation was when your, your friend... You had space. Yes. <laughs> sorry, I thought you were sorry. I thought you were gonna set it up there or something. No, no, no uh, set up. Okay. So yeah, when I when my friend when it was actually a family member where we, we created space, and usually I think what was most frustrating is it's usually if there is or if there is some sort of space or disagreement, it's usually solved very quickly, right? Maybe a day or two, everyone cools off a week if it's really bad, but nothing like major, right? And I think um, just the lack of like control you, you have with that of like, no, just get over it, right? Like we're here now, right? And then they're still not. It makes you think and question uh, so much of what Madeline said, the your identity of like, wow, did I really do something bad? Am I a bad person? You know, am I, um, you know, doing really hurtful things to that person? Then you start to analyze yourself and this is where you kind of go into your head too much of it. And um, it becomes that cycle of just questioning yourself and questioning, you know, did your, the things that you're doing right or wrong. Um, and it becomes a problem really quickly. And so has there been other situations in life that you felt like you didn't have control over where there was space between you and a loved one? Um. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's there's lots of opportunities for that. Um, usually it's when um, related to someone where I don't have control over that relationship, meaning maybe right. it's an older person or um, someone who's far away, right? You can't just visit that person when you, when you want to. Um, I think that physical and um, social distance what about someone that doesn't what about someone that doesn't want to fix the relationship with you? How so it depends it who it is, right? But if it's someone if it's that someone, you love and care about. Yeah, if it's someone you love and care about uh, for me, then again, I want them in my life. If it's someone I want in my life, I want to fix that relationship 100 percent But they don't want to. How do you feel when and that if, happens? And if they're feeling hurt about it or if they don't want to do it, it makes me feel hurt because um it's like I feel like this person should be in my life or I should be in their life and we you know, have a history of good things and doing good things together. Then it's like, what, we're just going to throw all that away or maybe not have that anymore. And it's just, it's kind of scary. You know, it's scary because it's like, can we ever get back to that? And then you start again, going back into the deeper thoughts. Yeah. And, that, and that's, I think what's important is, is what's the emotion that is, is, is surrounding that when you can't figure out number two, just try and think about emotions. What are the emotions that I feel when someone's far from me, when someone's distant from me, when someone's not wanting to, to fix things with me, when someone doesn't want to have a relationship with me that I want to have. And again, I'm sure that this is one situation in your life, but I'm sure if you look at yeah. your life in a bigger scheme of things, there were people that have let you down. And how Absolutely. did that, how did that make you feel? I think that's, that's the step two. Yeah. I, I feel hurt. And I, my initial reaction is like, fine, it doesn't matter. I don't need them anyway. Right. But then when you start to sit with myself, it's like, well, maybe I, I miss them for this or I miss them for that. And um, you just have like a longing, like you have a longing for that person or that relationship or that energy. So interesting. So, okay. So, so something happens, you lose, you like, you lose the relationship, you lose a friendship. There's there becomes space. You mm -hmm. feel sad. You feel hurt. The fact that that person is not there. Right. Yep. And then your two responses, look at this, look at step three for you. And now it became your two responses is I don't care or I'm going to do everything in my power to fix it. This is the, exactly. this is the responses to the, to the initial sadness, the hurt, the, the, 
the fear of just not having them in my life, the longing for them, the oh. initial response is I'll fix it. And if I can't fix it, I, I'm going to tell myself that I don't care. And, and that's that I don't need them. Yeah, exactly. Then I don't need them. Exactly. So that's, that's big. And the question is, okay, so these situations continue to happen and it's not about the person, right? Cause you can blame the person. They don't want to talk Correct. to you that you can, but what is the creator? What is the creator? What is the universe? What is your tikkun here? What is the creator trying to strengthen you in? And, and just think about it for a moment while we go to Momo, Madeline, mm -hmm. same thing. Like why, why are these situations coming? And I think only we can answer these questions and that's why, how we awaken our certainty. But the first step of awakening certainty is saying, hold on, this person or this situation is not doing anything to me. We can say that all we want, but at the end of the day, that won't make us feel happy and it will allow us to continue to either push people away or say, you know what, I don't need them or try and fix things. Or, mm -hmm. you know, you'll just keep blaming the employee, the coworker, whatever it is and saying, how come the world doesn't see my value? And we'll jump to Momo's Momo. We're going, we're dealing some pretty big things, but I just want you guys to think about it. And, and for those watching, for those viewing at home, asking yourself similar questions, right? Hold on a second. I felt this way. Have I ever felt hurt before? Have I ever felt not seen before? Have I ever felt like my light wasn't accepted before? Have I ever felt um, sad before? Have I ever felt angry before? Have I felt these things before? And the question is, chances are it wasn't the same person that made you feel that way, but people around you are making you feel that way. The question is why? So Momo, how did you feel when you, when the, when the professor didn't order your AP test? Can you um, so like I said earlier, I was angry, betrayed, frustrated, annoyed, vindictive, like unimportant or like a non-priority. Um, it hurt, you know, it's, it's not a good feeling to feel like you've been forgotten or left out. Um, it's also oh, like the frustration was honestly the biggest part. It's like, you know, what, what do I do with this? What do I do with this situation? It's not like I can just turn around and go get my own AP. Like the school has to order it. And it's a whole thing. And there's one day a year, and you know, like, it's like the worst possible situation to be in because I have no control over anything in it. It's just right. I got like left out and I can't go ahead and but was that it, it? was that it you're not allowed to take the test anymore it's like next you have to study a whole nother year or it worked out I'll tell you the outcome the outcome of it was the reason my certainty in like the universal process got strengthened is because there was actually a kid who was in that class who dropped out about a month into school of that class and they accidentally ordered him a test so at the end of the day, the vice principal was like, listen, you just take the test oh, order for that kid. Don't worry about it. We'll like, whatever, we'll figure out the details later, but just take his test. We'll change the name. Da, 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 da. Like the vice principal saved the day. But like in the moment before that solution was there, I felt so hopeless, like lost. I was like, oh my God, there goes an entire- Did like, you feel school. better that they remembered a kid that was- that Absolutely the not. The only thing I was happy about was that I could take the test in the end. I was still angry at the teacher. I was still angry at the system. I still blame the teacher for like leaving me out. Like the guy was not on my uh, nice list that for the rest of that year or like the next year, sorry. Um, what? the next two years he wasn't but i think what's no i took it in 11th grade so in 12th grade i didn't like him anymore but i think what's important momo besides from making the professor the bad guy was the fact it's cool that it, it's cool that it worked out but at the same time yeah. you know someone that dropped out was remembered and you were forgotten i think that's important feeling that I'm kid wasn't remembered by the way that kid just they forgot him too they forgot to take him off the list like but the point everybody. but the point is but the point is that that you know the the feeling of being betrayed i think in one of our previous podcasts you had mentioned that word if i'm not mistaken um, um and the word of feeling like insignificant or unimportant and I think the question here is, you know, the test got worked out and, and these things, by the way, normally do, normally do, we never can see it while we're in the darkness. And that's the point of certainty. But have you ever felt betrayed by someone else in your life? Or have you ever felt unimportant by someone else in your life? Um, someone else so. had that power to make you feel unimportant. Yes or no? hundred percent. hundred percent. So Huge, uh... if we look at these situations, if we look at these situations, they happen but if we don't strengthen the space in our life in which it's triggering chances are they will continue to happen i'll give you a quick quick experience from my from myself i don't um i 
I always have a problem with authority figures. And maybe some of you can relate, the viewers online and Momo, I, cl I guess clearly can relate, <laughs> yeah, have an issue it. with authority figures. So <laughs> my whole life, I felt like I'm being wronged by my coaches, by my teachers, by everybody that was authority figure. And, and, I, and it just fueled my, I would say, passionate hate towards these, these people that have power over you. And they eventually, so I literally had like, my, my basketball coach told me, you know, you're a better player and I would start you, but the person that's starting in front of you has a big ego. And if he sees that you're starting, he will not play. And then we won't have a backup for you. So I'm going to start him. And I'm like, wait, I, is that for I, like literally? And then it went back to like my math teacher in high school, went back to my, my, my soccer teacher, it went back to my swimming class. And every time I had a problem with a 30 figure, I ran. I ran away from, I, I quit the, the, the swimming team. I got really upset at the basketball team. I didn't end up quitting because I tried for three years and I didn't make it. And only in the fourth year I made it. So I was like, all right, I'll, I'll suck it up. But no matter what, authority figures kept letting me down. And they also felt, it felt like they didn't know what they were doing until I eventually moved into the workforce and I can't just quit. And I had a boss that was an authority figure. And I'm like, you know what? If I have faced these people and they've made me feel small, insignificant, worthless, Throughout my whole life with my boss, I'm going to try and have certainty that this person was sent to me for a reason, for me to overcome my authority figure. And she told me to do something that was so slow. She told me to do Excel. I'm like, I know formulas that can make it go faster. And she's like, no, do it my way. And I said, you know what? Oh, no. You know what? I'll do it your way. I'm going to listen to the authority figure. I'm, I'm going to humble myself and not think that I'm always right. And so I did it the slow way. It took two hours, two hours. It was so difficult, so difficult. It's like every moment was like, okay, this is from the creator. I'm going to learn how to be an authority. I'm going to learn how to work with authority figures. I'm not going to run away now. And then after I did that, I succumbed. I lowered my ego. I said, you know what? I'll listen. I'll feel powerful, even though I'm doing it her way. The next day, she, she got moved to a different post and I became the manager of my department. Like that, you, wow. I dealt with it immediately. I said, okay, uh, I'm going to deal with this. I'm going to learn how to handle authority figures and things shifted because that's the thing about certainty. Certainty is saying what? That the creator has a plan and each one of us has spaces in our life where we need to get stronger. Madeline, I'm sure. We'll get to my success story. Don't you worry. <laughs> but no, but what do you feel? What do you feel in those situations that the, the why does the creator keep sending it to you? I think they keep coming back or kept in the past coming back because there was this pushback. You know, I had the belief that if you worked really hard and you did all the right things, you deserved to receive the result you were expecting. And I kept like following those steps, not getting the result and questioning my self-worth. So I feel like what the creator was trying to show me is you have to believe in your self-worth no matter what you see. No matter what the person says, no matter where you get in, no matter where you don't get in. If you believe in your self-worth, that's the point from which you can then apply to something, anything, and let the other people see your, your greatness. Because I think Arrington is right. You can't control other people, but you can control how you see yourself, how you see your value, how you well, see how your you relationship how to the you, creator. How did you, do you feel like you've, you've grown in the self-worth category in your life since those situations kept repeating themselves? I've had to, I've had to, and I'll share a little bit more in the next episode about exactly how I did it, because I do have a little bit of a formula, but certainly, obviously they kept coming back. So there was a lot to work in that category, but definitely the, the latest blow, which was the whole job situation really did like break me down and build me back up into into a person that can face things and face situations from a whole different perspective amazing amazing i think that's really important it's really important to be able to switch that perspective from this is happening to me to the creator is sending this opportunity to me to improve me to strengthen me so when the when the bigger job comes along or when the relationship that really matters comes along i'm strong and able to see my value as opposed to he didn't see it she didn't see it so i'm gonna leave or they're gonna leave and then i'm gonna feel smaller i think that pattern the creator is trying to strengthen you and whatever the situation might be and i'm really excited for Arrington's. by the way i'm just i'm just i'm trying to think you know what, what 
what what do you feel the creator is trying to do by you know keeping those people away from you or having those people let you down and keep feeling that feeling of that that feeling what what do you think the creator's trying to do i think it's many things i think it's uh one letting go of the idea that someone may need to be in my life or, or maybe i need to have a relationship with um i think that's a big one of of why there's this desire to have this person in my life to begin with um i think another one again is i have a deep deep desire to control everything in my life from the time i wake up to what i eat how i eat when i eat um where i go my job everything and this is the one thing that i can't control so it's again kind of related to the first one of how do I let go of that lack of control, that feeling of not having something in my grasp, right? That I can maneuver, manipulate, or, or move a different direction, right? And with people, it's the one thing you absolutely cannot do, right? No matter how much you try. And sometimes, it, a lot of times, it makes it worse when you try to do those things. Yeah. Um, and then I think also number three, it's um, helping me value the relationships I have even more, right? The ones that are great and the ones that are healthy and good and, and bright and and fostering those and putting more energy into those and um you know not worrying too much about the bad ones how about i think those are all so super powerful how about how about maybe the creator is trying to get you to feel more i definitely feel a lot <laughs> to feel more to feel be, more <laughs> feel more yeah to feel more to deal to deal with to deal with emotions, to not try and fix things, but to feel the situations like, right. So you, you said that as soon as you feel it, you, yeah. as soon as you feel that pain, you're either, I don't need you anymore because that's, I can control that. Right. And, or I'm going to fix this and I can control that with a really like good talk. And, but what I can control is how I feel in those moments when I don't push someone away or when I don't fix things, I can't control that. But how about learning to, to sit in that feeling, I think that can make you a lot, a lot stronger as well. And you're saying like, it's, it's almost a backward situation. You say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to learn how to let go of control, but here's an opportunity to do so by not pushing them away. And also mm -hmm. by not fixing the situation, you're totally letting go of control and saying, okay, I feel sad right now. Okay. I feel hurt right now. And when I'm in that emotion, can I still be the best version of myself? And you said, no, I lost 15 pounds. And this, but I think the creator might want to make you like, you're very good with logic. Yeah. You're very good if you can box and compartmentalize everything. But yep. there's, there's other, like when you have bigger things in life, there's so much feelings and emotions that go into it. And being able to, to sit in those is a very, it's a very big strength. Yeah, absolutely. I think you said it best of still being able to feel that emotion and still be at your best. I think because it's a super powerful skill. I, I would love that skill. Um, but that takes a little, yeah, I don't even know how to get there. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll get, but that's powerful. I think many, for many of it's us, powerful. you know, they're looking at it like viewers are looking at us and saying, we have all the answers, but sometimes we just realize something for the first time and we legit don't have an answer for it right away. But that that's, that's the beauty. And, and, and uh, Momo, what, what do you feel? What do you, what do you, what do you feel is the creator trying to show you by having literally you, you be forgotten by your teacher who was supposed to remember you? So it's funny because before when you asked me if it happened some other time that I've been betrayed or felt like that, I started to see, I was like, okay, there's a pattern building. And then as everyone's giving their answers, I was like, okay, I think I kind of see what the, you know, what's the lesson to be learned here, which was I put so much energy into how people like see me or treat me or think about me or all these things that I don't see one, my own self-worth, two, that the universe is there to take care of me. It's not people who are going to give me what I need. It's like the universe is going to provide it. That's exactly why one teacher who's supposed to be the provider in this case, let's say, failed. Nice. But the universe was like, aha, don't worry, I got you. I made sure this kid left a month in and the vice principal happens to have the test with him because somebody forgot to take his name off the list of tests to order. Like, I got you covered, not this guy, you know, like focus up here um so yeah and then like other times that it's happened to very similar situations like one person would let me down or i felt betrayed by a situation or angry or hurt or frustrated and then all of a sudden the universe is like hey just give it like 10 minutes give it a week give it a month but you'll see i, I took care of it for you i got you like that do you feel do you feel like that's something that you can strengthen in yourself 100 um 
and I actively work on it, which we'll talk about in episode three. But amazing, like, yes, it's uh, it's it it was it was a work in progress because for majority of my life so far, I would say is I always put and still sometimes put uh, my stock in people rather than in the process or the creator. Like the the people are going to be the ones to solve the issue. The people are going to be the ones to provide. The people are going to be the ones to give me right rather than right. Uh, like the and I think I think we all share that. I think the, you know the authority figure, the friend, the 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 boss that's going to give me the job, or the college that's going to accept me, or the teacher that's going to remember. I think all of us like stalking people, stalking people. Stalk. It's what we know. But the yeah. certainty is about building a relationship with the creator and putting our stock in the creator, saying, "I know that this doesn't feel good right now." Right? We look at look at it. all of us when we started in episode one felt really like we brought up that situation. It didn't feel good, but now we're starting to get some answers. We're starting to ask some deeper questions. All of a sudden, like one second, you know, creator, you might have something going here. And that's the power. That's the power. We need to know that we all have a tikkun, which we, which you spoke about in another episode as well. We all have, you know, a process in which we came to this world to evolve, to grow. Um, and, and usually where those challenges are, where the cre- is where the creator is trying to strengthen us. And so, we all know that it, it's a huge moment of shift when you can see, wow, it's not about the professor. It's not about the friend. It's not about, you know, the authority figure or the coach. It's about me. That's a huge shift. But now, and once we know that, and hopefully at home, you can, you can take this, this class about certainty and, and help you realize it's not you. You got to take the situation and put it aside. Have I felt this way before? Have I behaved in this way as a result of that feeling? Ask ourselves those questions. If the answer is yes, it's not about the person, although it might be difficult and hard and painful for sure. But we don't want those situations to completely repeat themselves. I want to have control over my destiny. When I build the strength in that area, those tests are no longer needed. So so this is how we evolve. This is how we develop. And by the way, I've been doing it for 10 years. I think you, you all have been studying Kabbalah for quite some time now. So you're also, you know, you're, you get stronger at a certainty is a muscle. Once you get stronger, it's like a relationship. You know, you don't necessarily trust your best friend the first time you meet them, but they become your best friend after fights and ups and downs and ins and outs. That's our relationship with the creator, right? The first time we say, okay, you know what? I'm not a victim. This is not happening to me. This is happening to me for a reason. You grow, you overcome and things work out. Wow, creator, thank you for that. Like, and then it builds and builds and builds. The relationship with the creator and certainty is something you build. It's not something you can just, oh, I trust it's going to be okay. That's more like faith. Certainty is a relationship. And, and as we're learning together, um, we, we're all in, in that process of building, building our certainty. Building our certainty. Does anybody have anything to share before we jump off and, and uh, go send them to episode three? Yeah, I just, you know, when you were talking to Aaronson, I really wanted to make a parenthesis, but I didn't want to cut the flow of what you guys got going. But you made a lot of emphasis and effort to get us to go into those emotions. And I think the the thing we want to clarify here is why you did it, right? We all saw the process, but I think it's good to articulate for people listening and watching it. Why do we go into emotions? Because I like calling them like breadcrumbs. They're like breadcrumbs on the on your trail or on the path that you're in that can lead you to understand the pattern, right? It's not just like this happened and that happened because then it's people centered. It's this person did that to me, that person did that to me, and they're isolated events, as opposed to if I distill how I feel, it's actually on my path, right? It's it's only I'm the only one feeling that way. And if I shy away from acknowledging or articulating those feelings, either to myself or to somebody else, I can reveal what those emotions are trying to tell me, as opposed to forget about how I feel. This is what happened. This is the person that wronged me, right? They're, they just become like isolated events that we allow them to control how we are feeling. Yes. You see, you, you, turn the, you turn the wheel and you just say, I'm going to focus on what I'm feeling and what those feelings are trying to tell me, which is what we just did right? You asked us questions, you went deeper. And those are the questions that, as you said, we want people at home to ask themselves so they can identify those patterns and not just feel like, well, I just keep getting hit one after the other. And I can't see why. Right. And, right. And I, would add that, like, this is, and I would add, this is the purpose of, of the workshop, right? You don't necessarily have to have all the answers up front or right away, but when you start asking the questions and digging deep and um, getting input from your teachers or from this podcast, you know, that's where you can find transformation and find discovery within yourself and, and some of your behaviors with other people too. Yes, 
A hundred percent. I think that's the both very important points that, that these feelings that we feel are not something that I should put away because they're not good. It's something that I should bring up because they're what unifies. They're the clues that unify all the things that are happening to us. And that's maybe what we need to see the creator in those situations. So the feelings are important. Again, you don't need to dwell on feelings forever. That will take you down a different spiral. But what do I feel? Have I felt this way before? Um, is the creator trying to strengthen me in this area? Those three questions can really set you on the right path paired with the tools that we're going to share with you in episode three. So Arrington, thank you for being vulnerable. Madeline, thank you for sharing uh, Momo as well. Thank you for bringing up those situations and linking them to the past. Um, and thank you for all of our viewers that are doing this work on their own with no one interrogating them, no one bringing out the, you know, asking them how they feel. And you're just going to have to listen to what we say and go through it. You guys are the real troopers. So keep awakening certainty, keep looking for the creator, keep finding those spaces that are, are challenging because that's usually where the creator tries to strengthen us. Right. You don't need, if you're, if you're really good at shooting free throws, and making, you know, free throws, you're hundred percent from the line. The creator is not that the opponent will just make sure that you never get to the free throw line. And they're going to make you shoot other shots that you're not good at. It's because that's where we we're, we're working. We're trying to get stronger and stronger. Um, and the creator is trying to make us the strongest version of ourselves. That is what certainty is. So join us in episode three for some life hacks and some tools, how to awaken certainty right when I experience the darkness. Um, yeah. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you soon. Thank you for all the viewers. Yeah.